Hey there, YouTubers! Hi there, Dr. Sheep here. Welcome back to the astronomy video. And my leg really hurts. I don't... My leg was hurting before I played soccer yesterday, and now it just hurts a lot afterwards. Anyways, today we are finishing my series on the solar system by talking about the dwarf planets, and at the very end, we're going to be discussing exoplanets. Now, we've talked about planets before, but what exactly is a dwarf planet? Well, a dwarf planet is defined by orbiting the sun, not a planet, that would be a moon or a satellite, has enough gravity to hold itself together in a nearly round shape, and has not cleared its orbital path of space debris. There are five confirmed dwarf planets in our solar system. They are in order from distance from the sun, Ceres, Pluto, Maki Maki, Haumea, and Eris. <clears throat> All of these objects have orbits in the Kuiper Belt, excluding Ceres. Speaking of Ceres, um, let's talk about it, actually. <laughs> That's what this video is supposed to be, isn't it? Ceres is the first dwarf planet from the Sun, and it orbits the Sun in the Asteroid Belt. And in case you haven't seen my other videos, this is an area of natural space debris between Mars and Jupiter. Ceres actually accounts for a fourth of the mass in the asteroid belt and is the largest asteroid in the solar system. Even though it is a fourth of the mass of the asteroid belt, Pluto is still much larger. The radius of Ceres is only 296 miles. Just for reference, my home state of Nebraska is 430 miles long. So Ceres isn't much wider than my home state. One year on the tiny object is 4.6 Earth years and one day is only nine hours. It has no moon, or rings. It is suspected that it may contain more water than Earth. However, its water is in the form of ice. Lastly, it was discovered in 1901, and 1801 I should say. That's earlier than some gas giants. Oh my leg, holy crap that hurt. <laughs> Hi kids, I'm Mickey freaking Mouse. Has anybody seen my dog, Pluto? <laughs> that was pretty bad, wasn't it? From the time it was discovered in 1930, Pluto was considered a plant. I grew up on old 90s science. Yes, that's a thing. And so they all said it, it was a planet. And so I considered it a planet. I still kind of do. However, in 2006, the scientific community came together and demoted it to a new classification, Dwarf Planet. Well, we've all seen the Big Bang Theory episode. Pluto has a radius of 715 miles. It has about one-sixth the size of Earth. As I mentioned in my last episode, it has a highly elliptical orbit and will cut across the orbit of Neptune to, and will be closer to the Sun. Its orbit is also tilted, whereas the other planets are all on the relatively same orbital plane. This fact will become more common with the other dwarf planets. It takes 248 Earth years for Pluto to go around the Sun once. One day on Pluto is 153 hours. Could you imagine having that much daylight? And my laptop falls asleep. Pluto, from what I was always told, had one moon, Charon. However, it has four other moons I didn't even know about. Nix, Hydra, Kerberos, and Styx. I probably mispronounced all of those except for Hydra. Unlike the other moons in our solar system, it has these, all of these moons, excluding Charon, are not tidally locked. Therefore, they will show a different face to Pluto. That kids is not a writing mistake. That is what the planet, name of this planet is called, Maki Maki, not Make Make. As a kid, I always call it Make Make. Um, and that's an actual, relatively accurate artist rendition, because that's about all we know about it. They say it's reddish brown, but all the drawings all show it as like a deep red, so. Maki Maki is the third dwarf planet from the sun. Unlike the last two dwarf planets, we have not sent a spacecraft to explore the world. So any images you see are very pixelated and are taken from ground based telescopes or with the Hubble Space Telescope. Any other images are artist renditions, as you can see here. 
We do not know much about the object. It has a radius of about 444 miles, and we can tell it's a reddish-brown color, color similar to Pluto and has one provisional moon, MK1. One year on Makimaki Maki is 305 Earth years, and one day is 22 and a half hours. That's similar to Earth. Unfortunately, that's about it. Other than it was discovered in 2005, there's not much to talk about, and this pattern will continue with the rest of the world's planets. It's hard to talk about an object you've never seen, not through a telescope, so... I'm about to spend more time talking about football than I am going to talk about Hamea. As a child, I used to like San Francisco and Green Bay. Now I like the Bronx and the Chiefs. Now you can be like, oh my gosh, you're such a bandwagoner. No, I liked the Chiefs before they won the Super Bowl. The year before that, actually. Um, yeah, you can give me crap all you want. I like Andy Reid and I like Patrick Mahomes, all right? All right, I, if, if Patrick left, I'd follow Patrick, and I'd still probably cheer for the Chiefs, um, even with that, because it'd still have Andy Reid, I'd assume. Or maybe Andy Reid would retire. I have no idea. So what sports am I like does not determine anything. But this ball will come in handy later when we're talking about Hamea. And also, this is not an accurate representation. I have no idea if these rings are orientated right. That's right, kids. Hamea is one of the most interesting dwarf planets and is the next dwarf planet on our list. One thing is that it spins really fast. One day only lasts about four hours. Its shape has been distorted because of that fact. It is in, is in the shape of an American football. One year there will last 285 Earth years, and its radius is about two, uh, 385 miles, and it was discovered in 2003. It has two confirmed moons and has rings. The rings were discovered in 2017, when the icy world passed in front of a star. It is the first dwarf planet to have confirmed rings. Hopefully, like Pluto gets rings. It's got like five moons and rings. However, just like Maki Maki, not much is known about Haumea because no spacecraft has been there to explore it. I hope they do, though. This is more interesting than the other ones. I, I really don't have a lot of clever openings. It's it's Eris. The last dwarf planet in our solar system, and the last planet, is Eris. Eris is barely bigger than Pluto with a radius of 722 miles and was discovered in 2003. This started talks of demoting Pluto to a new classification of objects. Eris is much further from the Sun than Pluto, almost twice the distance. One year lasts 557 Earth years, and one day is 25.9 hours. It has only one tiny room, uh, moon, Dysomnia, D-Y-S-N-O-M-I-A. Figure it out for me, guys. That's it. There's a lot of there's not a lot of information on any of these dwarf planets, but that's because we haven't sent anything there to look at them, other than Pluto and Ceres. Maybe in the far, far future, we'll send something to Hamea or Eris. I'd like to see Eris just because how far away it is, and Hamea is just more interesting. And Maki Maki can suck it. Oh, we ain't done yet, folks. What the hell? is an exoplanet? Great question. Exoplanets are planets that orbit other stars that are not our own. These planets are too far away to be seen directly. However, we've come up with two methods of detection. The first is useful for large planets that cause their parent stars to wobble. The other method is the transit method. This is useful for smaller planets, similar to Earth. The transit method requires a planet to pass in front of its parent star, causing a dip in the light levels that we can detect. We look to these worlds to find ones similar to Earth in hopes to find extraterrestrial life or a new home for humans. However, with current technology and understanding of the universe, it is unlikely anyone alive today will ever travel outside our solar system to these worlds. Considering my last statement, that doesn't mean that this video isn't still around when people travel to other stars. They could be watching this in an archive of some sorts. Anyways, this brings us to the end of my series on the solar system. 
And join me in two weeks when we'll begin diving into Newton's Laws of Motion. In the meantime, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. New videos every other Friday, noon central time, and good night. Subs for trees. Subs for trees. Subs for trees. Subs for trees. Oh, you're still here? I thought I told you to go home. Oh, you want more? I'm flattered. Check out the playlist. If you want exclusive content, check out my Instagram, doctor underscore sheep underscore YouTube. That's all lowercase. If you want to help the earth, subscribe. When I reach 100 subscribers, I'm going to plant 10 trees. If you feel that's too small, then check out my channel tour where I lay out even bigger goals. Finally, stick around for the next 20 seconds to give me that sweet watch time. Bye.